Lost Golden City Archaeologists made a sensational discovery. They managed to discover the long-lost Golden City, which was named after the sun deity Aten Rising. This city is considered the largest of all that scientists have ever found in Egypt. Archaeologists literally caught their luck by the tail, since earlier about 60 missions were sent to search for this city, but they all ended in nothing. Excavations were carried out between the temples of Ramses III and Amenhotep III last fall, and when archaeologists saw the first signs of a brick structure, they decided that they had discovered the burial temple of Tutankhamun. But upon further excavation, they discovered zigzag walls, buildings and rooms. Seeing all this, they realized that they had discovered not a burial temple at all, but a whole city. For seven months, archaeologists worked tirelessly, and during this time, they were able to discover and excavate several residential quarters and workshops, the administrative district and premises in which food was made and stored. They also found craft workshops in which they made decorations for temples and amulets. In general, they found a lot of evidence that life was in full swing here, discovered vessels, dried meat and jugs with the remnants of wine that confirmed this. Scientists believe that the foundation of the city took place during the reign of Amenhotep III. Scientists have already announced that it is the largest of the cities found, dating back to the Golden Age, which is approximately 3,000 years old. For them, this is a kind of Aladdin's cave, since they do not know exactly how much more they can make sensational finds there. Their level is unpredictable. They hope to find ancient writings, which will describe in detail all the information they are interested in. And since the excavation continues, it is likely that sooner or later they will find them. Find in the ancient head of the Buddha it is not uncommon for treasure hunters to find a valuable find and then discover that it contains no less or even more valuable artifact. The ancient head of the Buddha can be attributed to such a find, and this head is made of wood and its age is estimated at 645 years. It is surprising that for as long as six centuries, none of the previous owners was able to find the cache which was discussed by skilled craftsmen. And only in 2016, art critics from Australia who examined the head before the auction managed to notice a cavity and in it a very curious and valuable find. This find turned out to be a large banknote and its size, in fact, corresponded to an A4 sheet. Upon careful examination of the banknote, it was found that it was issued in 1371, just during the reign of the first emperor of the Ming dynasty, Zhu Yuanzhang. The Wang Guan banknote was equivalent to 1,000 copper coins or 1 ounce of pure silver, 28 grams. By the way, all this information was taken from the bill itself. In addition, an inscription was found here, which said that for forgery of banknotes, the person convicted of this was facing the death penalty by beheading. It is worth noting that this find became a major event in the world of archaeology, since the banknote is, in fact, the very first copy of paper money in history. In Europe, paper money began to appear only 300 years later in the 17th century. At least earlier specimens have not yet been found. So, due to the attentiveness of art critics, one auction lot turned into two different lots. Sleeping Woman the art of sculpture flourished in Malta. Archaeologists in a huge number find here ancient Venuses, characteristic of the entire world of the Paleolithic era. But there are other works here, much more skillful. Of course, they were all religious in nature and were dedicated to the goddess. They are usually small. Of the large temple sculptures, only one has survived. The most famous piece of ancient Maltese art is a small 12 cm figurine of a sleeping woman. Pay attention to the above abundance of details, elegance of lines and shapes, and it was created two millennia before the first still-stab pyramid of Chaucer in the Valley of the Falcons. Let's talk now about the religion of ancient Malta. The foremother stood at the head of the pantheon of gods. Her cult sometimes became monotheic, and the society itself was a matriarchy. So one of the later temples was a necropolis for 7,000 deceased women. No remains of the men were found. The foremother personified the beginning, prosperity, 
therefore serving her was di directly related to the cult of abundance, namely the cult of food. They ate a lot, ate greedily, brought food to the temples, filled up the altars with it. The main occupation of the islanders was agriculture. Cotillering – Pie on the Feet Imagine a creature of gigantic size. Its barrel-shaped belly literally drags along the floor, and its head is almost invisible against the background of its powerful body. 270 million years ago, nature was just beginning to sculpt full-fledged vertebrates on land. As you know, the first pancakes are always lumpy, and our hero, if not a pancake, then certainly a pie on his paws. The dimensions of this giant are up to 6 meters in length, up to 2 tons in weight. In the Permian period, Cotillarhynchus was the largest land creature. You ask, what about dinosaurs? And dinosaurs, at the time of Cotillarhynchus, were not even in sight. The animal defended itself from the Permian predators by two things. First, by giant claws, they reached 5-8 cm in length. Secondly, the gigantic size. To hunt, our hero was as unrealistic as modern elephants or hippos. Cotillarhynchus are not a species, but a whole genus of giant lizard men. Some of them reached only 3 meters, some were twice as large. But it was difficult to hunt both those and others because of their gigantic size. In general, our body positive friend occupied a similar niche. Only not in Africa, but on the territory of modern America. There he peacefully nibbled grass along the banks of reservoirs, swam in lakes, conquered predators, and generally lived in a high. So, the first attempts of evolution to do something vertebrate terrestrial and large came out not painfully functional. Why is a Cotillarhynchus such a large body? Why such powerful paws? And most importantly, why such a small head? After all, such proportions did not give any advantage. But despite this, the beast became the biggest animal of its period. The oldest meteorite from the Sahara Experts have studied the EC002 meteorite, discovered last year in the Sahara Desert. This stone weighs about 32 kilograms and is estimated to be 4.6 billion years old. It has been identified as a piece of a protoplanet that formed before Earth. Achondrites are a fairly common type of meteorite, accounting for about 8% of all found. These are stone meteorites without rounded inclusions, chondrules. They are similar in composition and structure to terrestrial basalts. All achondrites, to one degree or another, underwent melting, which destroyed the chondrules. A team of scientists determined that this 32kg piece of rock was once liquid lava, then cooled and solidified for 100,000 years and eventually came to our planet. Until now, no asteroids with similar properties have been found. It is likely that the protoplanet from which it originated had since disappeared, becoming part of larger bodies or just collapsing. EC002 is composed primarily of volcanic rocks rich in sodium, iron, and magnesium. The mystery of the book hat from the sunken ship the strange object resembling a hat of cabbage lifted from the board of the Archangel Raffle in 2020 is nothing more than a book. The most valuable find is an impressive volume that has survived almost completely, but it has yet to be determined what kind of publication it is. The pages heavily contaminated with lard, grease and tar swollen from seawater have not yet given up their secrets. The book has survived in its entirety. There are more than 1000 pages in it. The paper fibers have swollen, the book is fully open because of this. It of course will require a very careful and thoughtful approach to restoration. The book has a leather cover. Under the cover, there is a backing, most likely made of wood veneer. All this will have to somehow be dried separately, disassembled, and separately dealt with the book block. The book will certainly be readable. Ancient books were recognized as authentic. The historical document, the Lassava book, was found to be fake according to the results of the analysis of linguistics. That is, during the study of old documents, a lot of attention is paid to the writing language and spelling rules that guided our ancestors. But experts were able to prove the authenticity of the books about Jesus not only due to this. They found books were in the spotlight in 2008. It was then that they first fell into the hands of scholars and posed a difficult question before them. 
Are these apparently ancient texts actually the same age as Christ? Or is it just another fake created by a particularly zealous enthusiast or fraudster? As shown by isotopic analysis, the books were created from metal plates, similar to another long found book, whose age is also approaching 2000 years. Similar traces of corrosion, as well as an almost identical composition of the alley, which demonstrates the work of not one master, but somewhere in the same period of time, since the technology of metal production has changed changed over the centuries. In addition, some pages of a kind of Bible contain very unusual information. So, the father of Jesus, that is, God, according to what was written, embodied both male and female sex at the same time. Also, the teaching of Christ was called not a new religion, but on the contrary, ancient Hebrew. However, researchers cannot yet reliably say what this means. Underwater settlement over 6,000 years old Underwater archaeologists from Croatia have discovered a Neolithic settlement that existed more than 6,000 years ago in the region of the island of Corsula in the south of the country. May Perica of the University of Zadar, together with Croatian archaeologists, while studying satellite images of the coastline, discovered a large and deep area on the seabed protruding from the eastern coast of the island of Corsula. Scientists decided to conduct an underwater survey of this site and identify identified a supposed Neolithic settlement that existed around 4500 BC. Archaeologists believe that this settlement was built on a small piece of land that used to be connected to the main island by a narrow passage. They managed to find the ruins of the stone walls that surrounded the village, as well as pottery, flint knives, and some other household items used by the residents. The location of the settlement seems to be very unusual. Scientists noted that they were not aware of such finds in this region, and the main discoveries of the Neolithic era, as a rule, were made during excavations in caves. In their opinion, Opinion, the neighboring islands protect the area from large sea waves, which allow the settlement to avoid natural destruction. $22 billion cash The Indian temple of Padmanabha Swami gained worldwide fame in July 2011, when caches with countless treasures were uncovered in its basements, totally more than $20 billion. These findings can only be compared with the values of the tombs of the Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun discovered in 1922. The temple was built back in 1750. The history of the appearance of treasures in the temple is rooted in the culture and customs of ancient India, when the rajas, upon accession to the throne, gave the ancient sanctuary as much gold as their own weight. At all times, merchants who visited the city made generous offerings to the deity of Padmanabha's Swami temple in order not only to receive a blessing for successful trade from higher powers, but also to enlist the favor of the local authorities. For centuries, riches have been accumulating in the temple, which the believers brought as gifts. The priests of the temple collected all these gifts and took them to storage in six underground caches. In six chambers, two of which were sealed about 130 years ago, gold bars with a total weight of one ton and bags of precious stones, rubies, sapphires, and diamonds were found. It is noted that among the most amazing items in the hiding places were a full-size throne made of pure gold studded with diamonds and other precious stones, 536 kilograms of gold and silver coins, a golden sheaf weighing more than 500 kilograms, dishes and crowns inlaid with rubies, golden figurines and a gold chain 5.5 meters and weighing 36 kilograms, and also a golden statue of Vishnu 1.2 meters high. The Ring of the Death Treasure hunters in Wales have unearthed nine valuable medieval artifacts in the kingdoms of Powys and Wales. One of the most valuable finds was a gold ring found in Powys with the inscription Memento Mori, Remember Death, and a skull. In addition, they found gold and silvery coins and a medieval double hook clasp. All values belong, according to historians, to the Welsh nobility and were made in the period from the 9th to the 17th century. The treasure hunters donated their finds to the National Museum of Wales. As the authorities of Wales said, it will become part of the national treasury. This is an early example of the late Tudor early Stuart death ring, said Dr. Mark Randnap, National Museum's deputy director for collections and research. The popularity of these rings was associated with the high mortality rate in that era. Their main idea was to remind of the transience and futility of life. 
These findings allowed us to learn more about the attitude towards death in that period. Finds also included a medieval silver ring fibula, Tudor coins, and a silver hook clasp. The oldest map of Europe a Bronze Age stone slab found by archaeologists in France in 1900 has been re-examined by experts. A new analysis showed that the drawings in stone are the first ever map of Europe. According to French scholars, the pattern was made 4,000 years ago and depicts the area of Western Brittany. According to scientists, the stone contains elements that would be logical to find on a prehistoric map, in particular, a repetitive image of parallel lines denoting a similarity of a coordinate grid on the map. After analyzing the surface of the map, scientists assumed that it was made in three dimensions, taking into account the height. In their opinion, using the third dimension, ancient topographers designated the heights in the valley of the Odette River. Several lines adjoining it seem to indicate the tributaries of the river. The stone, measuring 1.8 by 1.5 meters, probably depicts a territory that at the beginning of the Bronze Age was under the rule of a single ruler. According to scientists, perhaps it symbolized is the alienation of a given territory from one leader to another. And in order not to miss a new video about the ancient world, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. Thanks for your views! Bye everyone!